he didn't have a lot of money, you know, but uh, and the seat moved on him all the time. It rested out underneath, and uh, one Saturday morning I was home, and he was out there trying to fool with it. I went out there, and I said, what are you doing? And he's telling, he showed me, telling me, well, that damn thing was just where I could see. It got down underneath, and I could see it was rusted. Well, I worked for Omar Baking Company at that time. And I says, come on, let's, let's go up to the branch. I, I'll, uh, I'll have John put it, that's a mechanic up there. He put it up on a hoist. He took one up there and they put it on the hoist and he says, hell yes, well, it's all, it's all rusted out. So he went with a plate on there and put holes down there and the seat was solid and he got done. Thanks, Dad. It started to bring him out. You got to work with these mm -hmm. kids when they come home. You can't just let them run. My old man, I, I took off and I went to Peoria, Tijuana, Peoria is about oh, 55 miles away. I went down and shit, I was drunk for three days, <laughs> you know, just roaming around. And one day I woke up and said, what the hell am I doing here? And I went home and, and found me a job and went to work. Now, um, one thing I wanted to ask too is, that when did you meet your lovely wife? Well. See, I've been married before. You've been married before? Yeah, I wasn't married. My wife died. Uh, my first wife died. Oh. And I have uh, three kids by her. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is uh, were, you, were you married before you went in? Were you enlisted in the Marines, or did you marry after you got out of the Marines? I, I married right after I got out. Married right after you got out? Yeah, I got, uh, I got, uh, I got two, uh, two girls and a boy. Then my wife died, and I stayed. I stayed single for about uh, 17 years. And then one day I met, I met my wife. Now and we've been uh, we've been married now uh, 24 years. Next uh, next July will be our. It's coming July. It's going to be our 25th. Oh, oh that's good. Um, do you have any children with her? You don't have. I said have any children with her. No, 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 no. no. Did her. she have children from a previous marriage? Yeah, I got three. Oh, you got three two, from previous two girls and a boy. Okay. Um, the boy was in Vietnam. He, he went away in the war in Vietnam. Now, um, what, after you got back again, you know, did you go from job to job, or did you actually were you able, actually able to hold one job? And no, I moved because mo most most of the most of the experiences like you hear some of these guys where they they came back, they 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 went from job to job to job. No, I went to just two jobs over, I worked over in, uh, in Moline. You see, that wasn't too far from Kiwana. I went over to Moline, I got a, I got a job uh, with uh, John Deere. And uh, I was in a plow, plow factory. I was welding, I welded plows. And uh, I got pissed off one day and I quit them and I went to uh, Harvester and got a job at Harvester. <laughs> I worked there for a little while running a, a drill. And then uh, I, uh, I was watching the papers and I seen uh, Omar Baking Company, door to door bakery, uh, was looking for help. So I went up there and then I stayed with them for 15 years. I had, I'd worked myself up to a supervisor. I had, I had 11 routes, it was top routes out of the world. And pretty good go at it. And that was the best move I ever made. That was the best move I ever made. Because I come out of Caterpillar with a pension. Medical, still got good medical, but ain't paying for none of it. Mm -hmm. and I mean, that, that's, that's fortunate. We're, 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 me and my wife are very fortunate for that. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't move around no more after I, after I once got settled down with the whole Marbury Company. I didn't, I stayed with it. They used to send me in the Mendel, Milwaukee to school every year. They, uh, they wanted me to take a branch up there, and I wouldn't move. I wouldn't move because I had my kids down there. Who, and, uh, LaSalle. See, they live in LaSalle. I had my kids down there, and uh, I wouldn't move away. Of course, then my, my, uh, my wife was living too, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't move up there. I'd go up there and work. They sent me up to Racine a lot of times to build routes for them, because uh, I built mine. I had top branch, I had the top division in, uh, in the Milwaukee area, and that took them three states. I had a, I had a good bunch of guys. And, 
No. They made money too, boy. No, when he went to work for, when he worked for, they, they, me. <laughs> when he went to work for Caterpillar. Yeah. Um, obviously that was the union plant. And this is how I met you, is through the yeah. United Auto Workers. Um, we just want to touch a little bit on your uh, your activism with the UAW. Were you, were you ever you know an elect you know an elected official, uh, oh, sure, steward, committee person? Sure, I was I was uh, I got mad at the steward one day and I, <laughs> I took an, uh, I took a day off and I had I had Y time coming, see. I took a day off and uh, I come back in and the boss wasn't gonna pay me, so I called from the steward and I uh, got him over there and. Told him and he says, I'll talk to Boston. He wouldn't talk to Boston, the boss wouldn't give it to him. And uh, so I waited and the boss come down the aisle on that car he runs on and I stopped him and I had me and him had a little talk. Pretty soon he said, You come with me. And he took me over the time clock and he paid me. And that steward come bouncing down there, uh, just a chopping his lips, and he says, Yeah, I had to go over my head. I said, I got paid though, didn't I? <laughs> and he says, well, if you think you can do that job better than I do, you can have it. And I said, I'll take it. And that's how I started. And then I, got a, I was elected to the executive board, and I uh, was a committeeman for three terms. I was the only committeeman in Caterpillar that the factory manager came down to me one day and said, from now on, you work for the union first and me second. And he says, if you got to go any place to do get your work done, you go, don't ask your boss, go, I'll take care of it. And I go down, you know, to get agreements come in, I go down to the foreman and I talk to the foreman, I'd settle. And see what he was after. He didn't own all them grievances in third step. And I'd, I'd go up there with one or two of them and <laughs> see I was holding them. I could settle them, but I was, had to have something. And I, I just hold on to them. But he let me run that whole, let me run, had the run of the whole damn factory. No other commitment ever got that. But uh, the first thing I said to him when I was elected, I said, now, we, he called me and we was talking. And I says, you know, Mid Bill Myers was his name. And I says, you know, well, I want to say one thing to you. I says, I'll never lie to you. Even though if it helps my people down on the floor, I won't lie to you. But I hope you don't lie to me. And that made me right there. That guy picked that up and he made me. But I had a, I had a good run at it over the, as a, as a committeeman. I, they sent me, they sent me all over. They sent me all over. I sent the grievances down to Peoria. They sent me down to send a grievance down to Peoria. But I, I, I enjoyed that work. That's good. That was nice work. But uh, I, I met my wife, and uh, I waited until she retired, and the next day I retired. I, uh, I got more years retired than I did working. Uh, how many, how many years were you at Caterpillar? I was uh, twenty years. Twenty years. I've been retired 23. <laughs> and, but uh, I was in Caterpillar in the good times, real good times. We had a good, we had a good time. Did, now, did you retire before the, the big strike that they yeah, had? Yeah. Oh no, we. Uh, you, you actually you actually went through that strike? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I've drawn Social Security all the time. I was on strike. <laughs> I signed up for it. I was old enough. I signed up for Social Security. And uh, I had I to that Social Security all the time was on strike. And then I, when we went back to work, I, I, I worked uh, oh, a month, maybe three weeks. Still doing Social Security and working. But I only could make so much money, see. The minute I made more money, then I had to pay, pay that back. Mm -hmm. Well, dollar for dollar, you had to pay. But uh, I, had a, I had a nice job. I had a good job. But, uh, and I'll say one thing for the UAW. They treated, they have treated us in Local 145. They treated us real nice, real good. Now Mike Torres was in charge for the retirees, and uh, he gave me pretty much anything I asked for. And then when we remember when we uh, had the election and we took over this 
took over the state house. We took everything over. Dennis Williams was so tickled, he took and says, we're going to send the retirees to Black Lake. And they told us we, each one of us could have two, two couples. I ended up, I had six couples going down <laughs> there. <laughs> Glenn, you remember Glenn was here? Mm -hmm. he, he went with us, Black Lake. He, he took him and his wife went with us. Was, yeah, that's, uh, of course, I was at Black Lake three different times. So I was there uh, twice for a committee. Went down there on, uh, in the summertime. It was nice work. But I, I got to thank the UAW for me. They done me, they done me fair. And we love having you come down here all the time. Now, and right now you're you're with the UAW vets and you come to just every conference. Yeah. Rain or shine, not feeling well, but you're here every time. Every time. Every time I've been, I do, I do the same thing to the veterans home in LaSalle. See, back about uh, 15 years ago, I started going down there, taking a bunch down there, and we cook up for them. We take them outside, you know, and I, I put them under the shade, and we cook out for them and feed them, and then wheel them back in. We've been doing that for, for 15 years. For 15 and, years? And I, and I started. And I still went on there, and, and of course we, our veterans committee in our in our local world, we're not big at all. Say we're not big at all. So we couldn't handle this if it wasn't for the retirees. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm the financial secretary of the retirees. And all I have to do is get up and then tell them what I want, and they'll come, and they'd come down there. Nineteen, twenty people come show up to help work. And they do it every time. You just call for them and tell them we're going to cook out or we're going to play bingo in the winter time. And they're down there, boy. And they're down there every time. I, that, them, them retirees are are a pretty good bunch of guys. Okay. The the, the last couple of things I want to ask you uh, through all your experiences during the war that you had. I mean, obviously, you saw some very disturbing things. Yeah. Does that to this day, you know, obviously, you know, just when I talk to you, you know, on the outside, we, we you, it, you, it really doesn't look like it bothers you, but deep down inside, do you, do you have nightmares, dreams? Well, you, you, uh, you, uh, when you get alone, mm -hmm. that's when you think about it, mm -hmm. when you get alone.